Turn our attention to the heavyweight division now and the headline story on the evening Samoan born former New Zealand Olympian David Tua now Tua became one of the hottest prospects in the heavyweight division with a string of spectacular knockouts climaxed by the first round demolitions of John Ruiz and Daryl Wilson two fairly highly regarded fighters at that point he's regarded as the hottest young prospect on the horizon and then Tua takes 12 rounds to knock out David Izondrate takes 11 rounds to knock out Moskayev from Russia, and all of a sudden, there isn't just concern in his camp, but there's something on the order of full-scale panic. What's going on? When you find a potential champion, Jim, it's like finding a 80-carat diamond, and you can never get through worrying about it, polishing it, refining it, examining it, and that's what's going on in this process with Tua. Just six months ago, as he was being recognized as not only the best of the young heavyweights, but certainly the most exciting of them, his handlers were talking about him fighting anybody out there. But after those last two fights, they've pulled back and decided to go a little bit slower, even though he has shown in those fights the strength of will and punch that you want to see in a champion. But he did take more punches than you do want to see in a young fighter. So they've decided to help his defense, they say, by teaching him to be a better offensive force. We'll find out about that tonight, Jim, but every heavyweight prospect who has become a champion has gone through this stage. What I'm interested in is how a guy finishes a fight, not just how he starts it. And David Tua has shown he knows how to go through the gauntlet to finish his fights. All right, two fights ago, Tua had a tougher than expected trip against a Nigerian prospect named David Izonrite. Now he fights another Nigerian prospect, Ike Ibeabuchi. Does Ibeabuchi have enough stuff to throw down the gauntlet in front of Tua tonight? Well, he's no polishing rag, that's for sure. He's unbeaten, he's young, he's strong, he's full of confidence. And if he can take a punch as well as he can punch, which is always the question, particularly in the heavyweight division, and he might be more dangerous than some of the named fighters that Tua's handlers don't think he's quite ready for. All right. Well, let's take a look at the tail of the tape now between David Tua and Ike Ibeabuchi, and you'll see that Tua is in stature and in body style, the second coming of the young Mike Tyson, 5'10", 226. Like the young Tyson, he depends mostly on the left hook for his power. Ibeabuchi with a 9-inch or a nine pound weight advantage, I should say. Five and a half inch reach advantage, and if you look at those dimensions, you won't be surprised to hear that Ibeabuchi's plan is try to, to try to keep Tua away at the end of his longer jab. He wants to box Tua, at least in the early going. Rules of the bout with our ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The David Tua, Ike Ibeabuchi fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the bell in the 12th and final round only. Jim. All right, Harold, and now let's welcome Ike Ibeabuchi into the ring. Moved from Nigeria to Dallas five years ago to train under the watchful eye of former welterweight star Curtis Pokes, one of the better welterweights of the 50s and 60s, and a man who's becoming more and more revered with each passing month as a trainer, Larry. Curtis Pokes, welterweight champion for three or four years, had 100 professional fights, 100 professional wins, I should say. Via Bucci has the confidence that unbeaten fighters often have and which makes them so difficult to beat. Incidentally, he says that he would like to be a scientist after his boxing career. He says that Tua is acid, he's base, and base neutralize acid. I don't know what neutralizes base. It may be David Tua. Ibeabuchi saying that we're about to watch a chemical inevitability here. Base neutralizing acid. There's the record. 16 wins, 12 KOs. All of them against lesser known opposition. God first, it says on the front of the robe. Ibeabuchi is sponsored by a fellow member of his Assemblies of God Church in Dallas and says that as a heavyweight, he's on a mission from God to win the championship of the world. He's from the Ebo 
tribe of Nigeria, the same tribe that produced the great Dick Tiger. And Tua, born in Samoa, raised in New Zealand, went to the 1992 Olympics as New Zealand's heavyweight representative, more or less on his own, along with the guidance of Kevin Barry, the man whose hand you see on to his shoulder there. Barry, of course, was the New Zealander who was fighting against Evander Holyfield in Los Angeles in 1984 when Holyfield was disqualified for hitting on the break. The left hooking Tua with 27 wins, 23 by knockout. He won the bronze medal there in Barcelona in 1992. Incidentally, Ibeabuchi says, I would have been the Nigerian heavyweight in Atlanta if I had stayed in Nigeria and stayed an amateur there, but I wanted to come to the USA and become a pro. And now let's go up to ring announcer Jim Hall for the introductions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Arco Arena, Don Chargan Productions and Main Events Monitor, in association with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers Budweiser, this Bud's for you, present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC International Heavyweight Championship. This bout is sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Chairman Willie Buchanan, Executive Officer Richard DeCure, Assistant Chief Inspector Rob Lynch, Vice Chairman Ernie Weiner, Commissioners Elmer Costa and Frank Asvito. Our physicians at ringside are Drs. Robert Carnes, Smith Ketchum, and Van Buren Lemons. Our timekeeper is Stan Gordon. This contest also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, and Supervisor Hay Collegian. Our three judges assigned to score this bout on the 10-point must system are Rudy Jordan, Hank Ellisbrew, and Dick Young. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action is Lou Filippio. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our main event. Introducing first the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black. He weighed in at 235 pounds. His professional record is unblemished. 16 victories, 12 by knockout. From Dallas, Texas, here is Ike, the president. Ike Abucci. Ike Abucci. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trimmed with white and weighing 226 pounds. He too is undefeated with 27 victories, 23 by knockout. From South Auckland, New Zealand, here is the WBC International Heavyweight Champion, David the Terminator. Right. What? No, they they did it. It's okay. Let's go. Thank you. Okay, Tua. Okay, you had your instructions addressed to him. Give me a good fight. Shake hands. Fighters like Tua always look easier to hit or even easier to beat than they really are. They have such extraordinary will. They put so much pressure on that they can undermine even the best of athletes. And Lou Duba doesn't like the way David e or Ike Ibeabuchi's gloves have been put on, and so now Ibeabuchi's gloves will be adjusted under the guidance of referee Lou Filippo. We'll tape him in the second round. They got to go back and get it. You heard Filippo okay. say that they will tape his gloves in the second round. And immediately Abeyabuchi begins jabbing to try to keep two out there on the end of his jab. People in David Tua's camp, notably trainer Ronnie Shields, saying Abeyabuchi's a better fighter than David Izandrite, stronger, a better boxer. If so, Tua could be in for a long night. Abeyabuchi starting very fast. Good combinations, body and head. A little bit slow to get untracked here in the early going. Ibea Bucci, as Larry pointed out, working behind the jab and landing combinations. Uppercut for Ibea Bucci. Tua not getting off. Hard right hand over the top by Tua. Ibea Bucci says, I've got your right hand right here. And comes back to the 
body. He also had a low left, for which he was warned. Tua leaning in and looking to get off at close range. Ibeabuchi strong enough to keep Tua bodied off and go back to working on his jab. coming in against the extremely heralded Tua. You don't have to be concerned about that anymore. It's Tua who looks as though he's a little bit overwhelmed here in round one, and Ibeabuchi is just firing away. Hey, keep him up. Sometimes a fighter, Jim, early in a fight will throw a lot of punches because he's not confident, because he wants to see how he behaves in the air as well as his opponent. Tua taking his time. Good left hook. Doesn't phase him. Ibeabuchi landing the left hook right on the button. Tua's only had a chance to throw one of his patented sweeping left hooks. Ibeabuchi just a little bit low, but Tua had referee Lou Filippo blocked off from that one. you already see in Tua in his last couple of fights, which is he's trying to smother Ibeabuchi's punches by staying right on top of him. Ibeabuchi missing with a big left hook. Tua blocking a right hand, and now Tua begins to bob with the head as round one comes to a close. You feeling all right? Yeah, man. All right, baby. You the man, right? Who the man? All right, you the man. You came up one time, you got hit with a hook. Like don't come straight up high, all right? We don't want you coming up high, all right? No, cool. Snap, snap that jab out there, all right? You can't lay it out there with this guy. No, but this guy, he, look, he's fighting you, i fighting the inside, okay? Look. No. You don't want to stay in that, in that pit, okay? No. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, look, 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 you got the boxing. Yeah. You pop with the jab. Get out of there. Don't stay there all day with him. Take a deep breath. Stop, stop, stop. Take a deep breath. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. But don't stay, don't stay in there all day. You stay in there, let him know you're not scared. Stay there. You get out of that jam. Okay? Can a Bill Vichy sustain that level, Jim? Uh, he hasn't had long, tough fights. He's got to prove that he can just stay with it and fight that fight for six, eight, ten rounds and then dig something out for the championship round. And he sustained the Philip Holliday-like punch output. Ibeabuchi throwing 91 punches by CompuBox count in round number one. The heavyweight average is between 45 and 50 punches per round. So Ibeabuchi doubled the average in round one. And he comes out firing again in round two. Hey, hold it. Keep him up. That's the second warning. into his big left hook. I heard Ronnie Seals telling Tua between rounds, we don't want you to stick your head up like that. Stay down. Yeah, he keeping that right hand high to fend off the, the powerful left hook of Tua. And Ibeabuchi still no less bashful about throwing punches as he continues to fire away in combinations in round two. Whew, he's a big powerful men pounding on each other at this stage of the show. Maybe it's just something about David Tua that steps up the activity level. His fight with David Izanrate produced more punches thrown by two heavyweights in a 12-round fight than any other since CompuBox started counting them about 15 years ago. Tua has started to find some openings with his right hand. Not his best hand. And though Ibeabuchi has 
certainly thrown a lot of punches and landed a fair number in the first couple of rounds. He has not done any perceptible damage to Tua here in the early go. Well, basically, Jim, that's what makes Tua Tua. Right hand landed for Ibeabuchi. Tua getting inside and trying to throw the left hook. She is very impressive to this point. Left hook landed inside for Tua. Tua weighed in at 226. Ibeabuchi at 235. You have to figure they both gained a little weight since then. But when they lean against each other, it's 500 pounds of muscle looking for room to move in the middle of the ring. Very fast pace. All right, baby, all right, that's my man. That's my man right there. All right, Tua. Hello. Tua. How you, how you feel, baby? Look, my man, we're looking good, baby. Look, this guy can't keep up this pace like this. Tua. And there's a look at Aaron Antkolt, a doctor's assistant right here in Sacramento. Does a little part-time work as a round card girl. Most enviable job on the planet for women like Aaron. You're doing good. Let's, 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 let's keep on that side, all right? I got this little bitch. You, 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 you just keep fighting. I got you. Okay? Stay close to him right now, all right? All right. Punch him. All right? No, punch and step him out. If you're not going to punch, you got to walk around the guy. Keep turning this guy, okay? Right. Keep Hold turning this guy. Hold the, the short overhand right. Keep turning this guy. Bucci again through 91 punches in round two, so he's consistent. 91 punches thrown in round one, 91 punches thrown in round two. Well, if he can do that for 12 rounds, be very hard to beat. Loading up the uppercut. That can get dangerous, particularly against two his left hook. said, I should throw enough punches that my offense is my defense. So far, it is Ibeabuchi who is constructing exactly that fight plan. So far has smothered the big left hand of Tua, and that's enabling him to dominate this fight. So the job for Tua is to stick with the program, not get frustrated, and hope that Ibeabuchi wears down so that that punch output comes down a little bit, and that he'll get careless and make a mistake which allows Tua to land his left hook.
to see a hot young prospect. How about a look at welterweight Fernando, ferocious Fernando Vargas against a brave but overmatched opponent named Bill Burden tonight. That's Vargas in the multicolored shorts. And what a natural he is, Larry. Yeah, he's from Oxnard. He medaled at the Olympics. He appears to have it all. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. No. Stop. No. No. The fuck are you doing? The fight is over. Including the look of a fighter. Go right around him. You're not going to the right. You're standing in front of him, right? Go around him and get your hands off. Break a rib, baby. You got this here? Hit him on the shoulder. But punch the hard. Night is dead. All the hand night is dead. Let me see a punch with authority in there, right? Get close and turn him around. Turn him around in there. Come on. Through three rounds, Ike Ibeabuchi not slowing down against David Dua. Ibeabuchi with 182 punches, 91 apiece in the first two rounds, through 95 punches in the third round. So with his extraordinary activity level, he's dominating the fight so far. seems to be smothering himself. He, does, he doesn't seem free enough to get off. You heard Lou Duba asking in between rounds to step into position to throw to the body. But he doesn't have time to step into position to throw to the body because Ibeabuchi is throwing at him the whole time. dark brawl, Ike Ibeabuchi looking for a huge upset over rising prospect David Tua, and so far Ibeabuchi winning the first three rounds, at least in our eyes, Watch it, hold as he Watch doubles it, Tua on, in punch output. Now Tua begins to rake Ibeabuchi's body with hard right hands. Suck it up. You're doing good. You're doing good. You're staying in there too long for me. He, he, you, you got to make him let you get outside. Get outside I can and stick a jab four or five times. Then go back in there, okay? You get the outside. You let the motherfucker get too close Give to me you. Give him water right there. Let him get too close to you. Get outside, you Harold. <laughs> you have to fight so Larry, 39, 37, three rounds to one. Ike Bayabuchi. I thought he outpunched him for the first three rounds. The fourth round, real nice job by, uh, by uh, referee Lou Filippo, who told Bayabuchi, you know, cut it out with that forearm shiver. Quit shoving him off with your shoulder, which is really the thing to do. But in any case, I thought David Tua did get in enough good shots to win the fourth round. This is a tough fight on the judges. They got to leave and squirm to get a good angle to see the fight. You're right. We both have almost the same angle. Harold, I have it for zip for a Biabucci. 
We had an upset at the Paris Open today. Martina Hingis losing. We had an upset in the Belmont Stakes today. Silver Charm losing. Are we getting another upset here? Are you saying that Ibeabuchi hits like Eva Maoli? <laughs> right down the line. Backhands and forehands. And if Tua gets desperate, he might see more and more unforced errors. So far, Tua trying to stay within his envelope and hope that he can wear Ibeabuchi down. He'll need more body punching to do that. Working upstairs, just not getting it done for David Tua, who tends to take two or three punches in return every time he tries to hit Ibeabuchi in the head. Like that. More and more, it appears that if Tua's gonna get something done here, he'll have to find a way to chop Ibeabuchi down from the body up. I sense that Abeyabuchi is slowing down a little bit. We still have a lot of rounds to go. Yeah, he can slow down a lot, and that isn't nece going to necessarily give you a control of the fight. Uppercut landing inside for Tua. Begins to score across the top. Ibeabuchi comes back to the body himself. Hey, and continuing to shoulder to a off, looking for room to punch. <laughs> the referee said to Ibeabuchi, we're not playing football here, as he tried to shoulder to a out of the way. And Ibeabuchi is thinking, why is he talking about soccer? Tua did get in a couple of good shots, his best shots of the fight so far. And Ibeabuchi answers with left hooks of his own. Now they begin to trade shots in the center of the ring. And you get the impression that over the long haul, this would favor David Tua. Ibeabuchi obviously with the urge to give back just as good as he gets. That right hand beginning to drop. Maybe Tua will get a chance to land his left hook. This is like a big offensive line going against a big defensive line. A lot of leather popping. And the left hook got in as for the first time all night, Ibeabuchi allowed his right hand to wander away from his cheek. That's the way you fight. That's the way you fight. That's the way you're supposed to be this guy. Tua, he's hurt, baby. He's hurt. Listen you to me. Tua, come on. Let the hook go now. Don't hold the hook back no damn more. You understand? Look, this guy came to fucking breathe okay, Let's box him, all right? Okay. We, we're, making a, we're, making a, we're making a duel out of this, and we don't have to do that. Okay. You got the skills to do it. Let's go out there and box him, all right? When you fight him inside, I, when you fight him inside, fight him inside, then get out of there, and then go back to your boxing. You stand inside too low, you let him get set up for shit. Fight him inside, then get out of there, and jab, jab there. Then go back inside, fight him, and come out of there. Okay. You stand there too low. Okay. Here we see Tua starting to work with his left hook. The body shots have started to open his opponent up a little bit. And also, Jim, it's just that he was fighting at such a furious pace in those first three or four rounds that he had to slow down some. Red marks around the right eye of David Tua, abrasions on the outside of his cheek. You saw Ibeabuchi's punch output dropping. 68 blows in that last round. That's still an extraordinarily high punch output for a heavyweight. But far from the 91, 91, 95 with which he opened the bout, now Tua driving Ibeabuchi back with the left hook. Tua's got to keep working to the body and keep trying to bring that right hand down. Now the right hand lands across the top for Tua. Ibeabuchi coming back with left hooks of his own. More of attrition in Sacramento. Can David Tua wear down and overcome what would appear to be an early lead on the scorecards for the Nigerian upstart. Fainting 
with the right and firing the left hook. Tua starting to get some room to work and getting a little bit more of a sense of himself in there as round six progresses. And remember, it's scheduled for 12. Ibeabuchi losing some snap on his punches. And quick left hook by Tua. Best round so far for the New Zealander. Bucci's left with his right hand, stepping in behind the jab. Ibea Bucci not defending himself nearly as well now as was the case in the earlier rounds. But he's showing himself to be a little bit more versatile, getting a blow by standing outside and scoring with some lighter punches, and Tua has no answer there. Ibeabuchi's punch count drops. He uses his hands less, starts to use his feet more, trying to create distance between himself and the hard punching Tua. Ibeabuchi fighting much more defensively now, responding to what Tua does. The combinations belong to the Samoan-born New Zealander. Bucci being reduced here in round six to one punch at a time. Now he tries to throw a combination and Tua counters it with a left hook. Right hand in close by Tua. Best round of the fight for David Tua. Hey, watch for HBO's entertaining documentary, Long Shots, The Life and Times of the ABA. Relive Dr. J's dunks. Rick Barry's passes, and Laverne Tarts all-around game. The show premieres Monday night at 10 p.m. Roger Brown, Dan Issel, Willie Wise. What a great league it was. Darnell Hillman. I went to an Anaheim Amigos game, Larry. I saw Will Chamberlain coach the San Diego team. That would be the conquistadors. You've got to punch more to the body. you got to go hard to the body. I got you. I got you with here. Look, Tua, yeah. right. stay close to him, all right? I but look, Tua. Don't quit. You know you can go Toyo. Seven, seven up, seven up. Seven up. You're, you're deep breath, deep breath. You do a break, John. Keep your hands up. Come on, no kidding. That hurt this guy. That hurt this guy. That was an, a, an odd statement from Curtis Cox in the corner when he said to his fighter, don't quit. What did he see or what does he know? that we don't. Uh, we didn't see any quit. We just saw him slowing down a little, which would seem to be normal. But I think he didn't like seeing Ibeabuchi on the defensive and Tua dictating the action so clearly as was the case in the last part of round six. So now Ibeabuchi will try to seize the initiative in the fight again, but he's backing up, popping the jab out there not landing power shots or throwing in combinations the way he was earlier in the bout. So we're getting more and more assertive. the jab and it's not nearly as effective as it was when he was firing combinations behind it. Two is slowing down just a little bit in the seventh as compared to what he brought in the sixth. Easier for Tua to land right hands across the top than it is for him to get in his vaunted left hook.
to Dan. Round seven has become another power punching round for Tua. Tua just keeps coming as his type of fighter has to do. This is what has made him special up to this point in his career. The relentlessness of Tua. Hard right hands and the power left hook. Defining round seven as the bell approaches. Come on. David. David. How you work? You're not listening to me. Look. Move to the right. Throw the short overhand right. And come back with that double hook. Hold on, hold on. Tua, you're going to catch him all the time, baby. You understand? Look, Tua. Oh, okay. Now, look. Okay. You know we've been level with you, all right? This is a very close fight now. Look, the little small jab that this guy is throwing is scoring punches on you. You got the jab with the guy. And when you get close, throw the overhead right and back to the double up with the hook. But look, go back to the... You, gotta, you, gotta, you can't let him just walk and do what the fuck he want to do. Okay. You got to make a run at him. You got to show him you're a bad man. You got to make a little run at him now, okay? You can't just stand there and just... Let him dictate what the fuck's gonna happen this round. You go make a run at him, a strong run at it. Okay. Strong, hit him as hard as you can. Okay. Come on, let's go. Pick the left hand up, all right? Okay. right. You heard Curtis Cox, the trainer, who senses that Tua is coming on and feels that his fighter has to make a stand here, not to let it get away from him. Curtis Cox told us about Ike Bayabuchi. He said he has more desire than any fighter I've ever known in the game, and that's saying something because Curtis Cox has been in the game more than 40 years. He's going to need all of that desire and more now. In the last two rounds, Ibeabuchi's connect percentage by copy box count is slipping well below 20%. He had been landing at a 50% rate early in the bout. connect percentage is rising as he gets in more and more of those right hands across the top the occasional left hook and when he remembers to do it body shots good hard right hand to the body by Tua Ibeabuchi tries to come back to Tua's rib cage but without effect Give me 
All right, we're looking good, David. Now, look, David, look. Baby, look. You got the punch to her. Look, you waiting too long with this guy. This guy trying to steal her. He's trying to steal the round from me at the last 30 seconds. Now, that's what we working on, right? Okay? Now, to her. Listen to me. You got to go back to the body. Look, you're throwing the overhead right, but you're falling short with your hook because you're not coming back with nothing. Come on. Throw the Throw the right hand, the overhand right. Give me this hand. Throw the hook up. Then look, go back to the bottom We're with the two thirds of the way through <laughs> this fight. How do you have it? Larry, I got it close. Four rounds apiece, 76, 76. I got it all even. I thought David Tua definitely won four, five, six, and seven. He kept moving forward. He was landing a cleaner, harder shots. And all of a sudden, in the eighth round, I thought he ran into a couple of really good shots that Ike landed. So I gave the first three rounds to Ike, the eighth round to Ike. I got it all even. I have it four, three, and one for President Ike, as he calls himself, Mr. President. We have seen nothing not to like Ike about so far in this fight. Interestingly, in round eight, by CompuBox numbers, David Tua threw 82 punches. So Tua's punch output rising through the course of the bout. Ibeabuchi threw 73 punches in that round. It's still a very high output for a heavyweight. Hard left hook to the body by Tua. Ibeabuchi still comes forward. Very strong heavyweights. And some of the snap beginning to return to Ike Bayabuchi's punches in the latter part of round eight and now the beginning of round nine. For a while he was going with the jab, now he's sticking it with resolution again. You may wonder, how does a a fighter like this come out of nowhere. I frankly admit I had never heard of him until this fight was made. 16 professional fights, short amateur career, but he's had excellent teaching. He has a magnificent body, and he wants to win. Well, I'll tell you what. For a division that's gotten so much bad ink and bad publicity in the last five or six years, there is a ton of talent in the heavyweight division. We've seen some excellent foreign fighters, Jim. We haven't seen one of them yet rise to the level of champion. But maybe Tua will. And you saw that uppercut stopping Ibeabuchi in his tracks for the moment. We haven't seen anyone yet who is a Tyson or a Holyfield. of those fighters in their 30s. chances now through round nine. You saw him slinging that big right hand over the top. He's bound to take the occasional left hook in return when he throws a punch like that. But by this point, you suspect that Tua has decided Ibeabucha can't really hurt him. Good blocking of the left hook by Tua there with the right hand. And Tua able to throw across the top and come back twice to the body. Maybe a tiny bit low. Lou Filippo says keep him up. As Tua, as Tua has made an impression to the body in this round, Ibeabuchi again lost the snap off his jab. Come on. You got two hands, baby. Look, you got two hands. Tua, you got to move both hands, baby. That's all I can tell you. Look, Tua, you're going the wrong way. Go to the right. Throw the right hand and start dumbing up on the hook. Okay? Tua. Now look, start leaning off with the hook now at the top. All right? You gotta get close at the to this top, then go to the body. Okay? Give me some water. I called call him on it. You gotta get me, son. I gotta get me, big guy. So you slip away from us, okay? Come on, ahead. Huh? Come on, man. Come on. You gotta make me a serious run there. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, baby. Help me out here. Help me out here. Come on, make a serious run at this man. Here we see Tua using that left hand that has brought him to this point. Three hooks, partially blocked, followed by the uppercut. 
Round 10 of a scheduled 12 between David Tua and Ike Ibeabuchi. And if the plan is for Tua to get a lot of tough rounds, he's getting them at this stage in his career. 12th round knockout of David Izonrite in December. Then 11 rounds with Meskaya a couple of months ago. And now this as he goes into the 10th with Ibeabuchi. more than welterweights Oscar De La Hoya and Brunel Whitaker were seen to throw in their 12 rounds against each other. You buy a ticket and see a fight like this, you've gotten your money for it. Another great night of boxing here on HBO's Boxing After Dark, the baddest boxing telecast in the business. across the top, the strong Ibeabuchi able to weather the storm. <laughs> left hook to the head, left hook to the body. Ibeabuchi snapping the jab. We are walking right through Ibeabuchi's stuff at this point. David Tua is one of those fighters who's a mile wide and a mile deep. There's real depth to him. The way he keeps coming against a bigger, heavier man, takes everything. This is a very rare thing to see in any fighter. Joe Frazier. Those kind of guys. I saw Joe Frazier in his first fight in Madison Square Garden, knocked down twice by Oscar Bonavena in one round came close to losing that fight, got off the canvas in the middle of the round, finished the round, won the fight big. That's David, what it takes. David Tua has landed several clean power shots here in the 10th round, landing left hooks and right hands over the top as he has throughout the second half of this fight. Fascinating fight to score. The early portions clearly belong to Bayabuchi. Middle segments seem to belong to Tua. Both fighters have had their moments in the last couple of rounds. Great combination by Tua. Great combination by Bayabuchi. Okay. Okay. You're doing all right, son. You're doing all right. That's the last one. Right. I need it's a better one. one. I need a better one. You got your second win now? Yeah. You, 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 you feel good? Yeah. Okay. Oh, let's put the punches. Let's put the punches. The right hand. Listen. The right hand you throw. Most punches ever thrown in heavyweight fights scored by the CompuBox punch counters. 14 rounds for Ali Frazier, three, the Thriller in Manila, 1,591 punches. That's the record. Record for a 12-round fight, two against Izan Rite, December 21, 1996, in Uncasville, Connecticut. You saw there, already through 10 rounds, Tua versus Ibeabuchi, third on the all-time CompuBox list. And in the last round, the 10th, Ibeabuchi threw 85 punches. Comes out punching to begin the 11th. But it is Tua who is landing the harder, more damaging shots. Like that right hand right there. And just as was the case with the first of our two fights tonight, Larry, neither man likely to be penalized in public estimation by what they've done here. Now, if, if this formerly unknown fighter should lose the fight to Tua. He is obviously on the long list, if not the short list, of heavyweights you want to see again. Harold 
10 rounds. How do you have it now? Larry, 6 to 4, 96, 94, David Tua. I think he's winning this fight on effective aggressiveness and clean heart punching. But I want to tell you, this is a rough fight to score. It could go either way, and the judges really got to lead to get a good view of this fight. I'm telling you, this is going to be a tough, close decision. I agree with you, Harold. I have two ahead, five, four, and one. Remember Mike Tyson saying a few years ago, I work in a hurt business. This is a hurt fight. Both men hurting each other constantly throughout the battle. Neither man ever in danger of going down, despite all the hard punches that have been landed. Two very strong heavyweights. Judges 
judges have seen it his way. I think so, too. I'll be surprised if David Tua doesn't get the decision, but I can't wait to see Ike Ibeabuchi again. Harold, how do you have it after 12? Larry, let's make it a threesome. I thought David Tua won a close decision. 115, 113, seven rounds to five, David Tua. I want to tell you something. I don't think he stole that last round with those last few shots. I thought Ike won it, but be as it may, I still think David had enough of a lead to win this fight. You know, when I gave him room to punch, David did best. When Ike stood in toe-to-toe -to -toe in those first couple of rounds, I thought Ike did really well. But as the fight wore on, David Tua showed he was the stronger puncher. The reason that this fight is so hard on the judges is because half the time, you're looking at a guy's back because heavyweights move very, very slowly. They don't turn much. It's hard to really get a good view. In any case, 7 to 5, 115, 113, David Tua. Extraordinary effort by both fighters, and what a statement on Ibeabuchi's courage and desire that after being hurt at the end of the 11th, he came out and clearly won the first minute of the 12th round, imposing his will oh, no. on the extraordinary Tua during that part of the frame. And it is indeed an all-time record for punches thrown by two heavyweights in a bout scored by CompuBox over 12 rounds. In fact, they threw more punches through 12 rounds than Ali and Frazier threw in their 14 hellacious rounds in Mandela. I got it. Still waiting for the official decision from the judges. Tua looking for his 28th consecutive win. Only the fifth time that he's had to go the distance. Ibeabuchi told us yesterday, after tomorrow night, I will no longer be a secret kept. And now let's go to ring announcer Jim Hall for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Judge Young scores this fight 117-111. Judge Ellis Bruce sees it 115-114. Judge Jordan scores this fight 116-113. Unanimous decision in favor of the new WBC International Heavyweight Champion, Ike, the President. The judges are impressed by Ike Ibeabuchi's 975 punches thrown, most ever by an individual heavyweight in a 12-round fight. So a unanimous decision victory for Ibeabuchi. And he thanks God for the opportunity. Thank you, Lord. 
Final punch stat numbers. And you can see that Ibeabuchi landed 40 more punches, threw 220 more, a lower percentage, but both fighters landing at an extraordinary high percentage in this high contact boxing match. You're about to meet a delightful personality as Larry Merchant stands by with the winner, Ike Ibeabuchi. All right, thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Ike. What won this fight for you? God. God first. In fact, I told you what has been hidden from the wise and the prudent have been revealed to the babes and the sucklings. I did not uh, come you to said, fight. Well, you said, you said, I did not come to fight flesh and blood here, but spiritual wickedness in high and low places. Thank you. you said that you were a secret about to be discovered. How hard was it to be discovered well, tonight? Well, well, you know, I didn't, mind, I didn't care because my promoter said, Krishna, he knows what he was doing. I think he was trying to keep me a secret, but I, I think after today, I'm no more a secret. <laughs> were you concerned that you had fought lesser opponents than Tua up to now? I mean, it depends on what Cedric puts down in front. If, if, if Cedric puts Evander, my brother in Christ, if he puts him before me, I will take it. I will take it up. If he puts Tyson, I will take it to him. I'm not scared. God said, "Don't fear no one." Right winning. now, in boxing terms, in boxing terms, why do you think you won this fight? Well, you can see the ring generation. I mean, Tua is a great champion. I mean, I didn't take anything. I told you yesterday that I'm just a passerby. I still recognize him. He hit me with a, a, a couple of good shots, but hey, God is my tongue. You now. said ring generalship. Do you mean the fact that you had more versatility than him and oh, you yeah. could fight him from outside? Yeah, Tua is a one-way fighter, and I told you yesterday that if Tua, if I get in close with him and do what he likes to do, which is to brawl, then I will go into box, and I box him too, and I, I, and I fought him too. So you can see, you saw me doing the two things. That's ring generalship. Curtis, I told you all, this guy is a legend. <laughs> yeah, it's time to give him... Curtis Cox, just his comment, how far can Ike go? I think he can go all the way. He's a he's a young fighter. He's a full he's a he's a full fighter now. He can do it all. He can box. He can slug. He's got ring generalship. He's a smart man. He can do the whole thing. Thank you very much, Curtis Cox. And now let me go to David Tua. David, a very very hard, tough fight. What was so difficult about this opponent compared to the others you fought? Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, uh, first of all, thank God. Um, that uh, nobody was seriously injured, and uh, I give the opponent all the credit in the world. He's a very uh, tough competitor and a good fighter, a good sportsmanship as well. But um, you know, it was one of those nights. You know, I was trying to put it together, and uh, you know, uh, I felt good, but it wasn't good enough tonight. Was his ability to, on occasions when he needed a blow, to stand outside and box, where you had to keep coming, keep coming? Did that give him some kind of edge? Do you believe? Well, he just fought a good fight, you know. It just wasn't uh, a couple of times I wasn't uh, going around where I was supposed to do, and, uh, you know, uh, I paid the price. Thank you very much, David, for a gallant fight. Before I go back to Jim at ringside, let me just say that David Tua came into this fight as the big rough diamond that everybody looks for, but he himself uncovered another diamond tonight. And the heavyweight division is starting to get a little bit jumbled on the lower edges. And we're seeing some good young fighters out there that are going to be entertaining us for a while. Jim? All right. Thanks very much, Larry. And indeed, to the names of Andrew Galata, slightly tarnished, and David Tua, now slightly tarnished as well, add the name Ike Ibeabuchi as one of the young heavyweights who will be in or near the title picture, apparently, for years to come. A tremendous performance here tonight, as once again, Boxing After Dark produces the kinds of fireworks which have defined this telecast as the baddest in the boxing business. We'll be back with a final word on what happened in the ring in just a moment. Right now, let's look ahead to some upcoming programming here on HBO. The untold story of the World Trade Center bombing. Path to paradise. Found a piece of the van that carried the bomb. You're under arrest. How it happened. Freedom of religion protects a bunch of fanatics. And how it could happen again. Empire State Building. Lincoln Tunnel. Boom! Peter Gallagher and Marsha Gay Harden in an HBO original movie. This isn't over. Path to paradise. This is only the beginning. Premier Saturday, June 14th on HBO.
They were hot shot mavericks in an era of reckless transformation. We were free and wild, and the times were free and wild. Fast paced in a decade of devil may care speed and change. Glorified street ball, the red, white, and blue ball was viewed as a joke. The three point shot was viewed as a gimmick. They were ramble, scramble trailblazers that forged the way for the next generation of NBA superstars. I developed my own style of play, which is at times sort of a playground style. For nine extraordinary seasons, they were high flying, slam dunking three point shooters. HBO Sports presents Long Shots The Life and Times of the ABA. Premieres Monday at 10 p.m. Only on HBO. Great show. Don't miss it. Also in June, Oscar De La Hoya returns for the first time since decisioning Pernell Whitaker, fighting David Kamau of Kenya. On the same card, next Saturday night, you'll see Gennaro Hernandez coming off his gutty victory over Azuma Nelson, facing Anatoly Alexandrov in a super featherweight title fight. And in July, Lennox Lewis fights Henry Akinwande. Lewis back for the first time since his weird conquest of Oliver McCall. So you know Lewis wants again to try to look impressive. As for Akinwande, well, we'll know a lot more about what level he's at after he faces the toughest test of his boxing career. Then in the Battle of Albuquerque Natives, super featherweights Johnny Tapia and Danny Romero collide. It's deeper than blood. This intra-city feud has been brewing for a long time. No love lost between the two camps. They'll attempt to settle the score July 18, over 12 rounds of boxing in Las Vegas. On a more genteel note, tune in for Wimbledon right here on HBO. Our live coverage starts June 23 and goes to the men's semifinals, injuries permitting. You'll see Pete Sampras trying to regain the title he lost to Richard Krychek and Steffi Groff defending her crown against Martina Hingis. Earlier this evening here in the Arco Arena in Sacramento, Jose Luis Lopez in a rousing battle with Aaron Davis won a majority decision. A courageous performance by Davis who could not make weight for the fight, nevertheless went forward with the enterprise as Lopez agreed to fight him and both fighters put on a great show. Then an even greater show, an all-time record for, for CompuBox covered fights as to number of punches thrown in 12 rounds by two heavyweights and an upset victory for Ike Ibeabuchi, emerging force in the heavyweight division with a unanimous decision win over super prospect David Tua, who himself fought brilliantly. Coming up immediately following our show, please stay tuned for Dream Man, right here on HBO, a movie about me. So now for Larry Merchant, Ray Torres, and Harold Letterman, I'm Jim Lampley saying goodbye from Sacramento. The executive producer of HBO Sports is Ross Greenberg. The night's coverage of Boxing After Dark was produced by David Harmon and directed by Mark Payton. The associate producers were Dave Leapson and Adam Berger. Assistant to the producer, Thomas Erdelfeld. The production manager was John McCalley. The technical supervisor was Bob Hunter. And one note from all of us here on Boxing After Dark and from all of us in general at HBO Sports, our deepest and most heartfelt condolences to our boss and good friend, Time Warner Chairman Jerry Levin, on the death of his son, Jerry, our heavy hearts are with you. Celebrating 25 years at the Network of Champions. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports.